Hello, everyone, and welcome to the closed beta launch event of MindOS, the generative AI creator and work co-pilot created by Mindverse. I will be getting started momentarily, but in the meantime, please get comfortable and feel free to follow us on Twitter and join our Discord community. Discord will be one of our major community hubs in the coming weeks, so it'll be a great place to get MindOS updates in real time. Just allow people to continue to join for a few more seconds. All right. Well, now it's my pleasure to welcome you all to the closed beta launch event of MindOS, versatile AI brain power that supercharges service and sales in the industries of the future. To begin, I'll outline the agenda today and introduce the MindVerse's co-founders who will be speaking with us. First, we'll introduce MindVerse and our vision in the context of the AI industry. Second, we'll talk about our AI model and core service, which we call Mind as a Service, with some context of how this works in the context of the LLM-based AI in use today. Third, we have a deep dive on the features and setup steps for our product, MindOS. Fourth, we'll highlight some examples of how MindOS can be used in different industries and provide a live demo of MindOS in action. Next, we'll share more about how we'll be working with our closed beta community and some next steps for our company, our relationship, and our technology. Finally, we'll have Q&A at the end. We welcome you to use the Q&A tool in Zoom, and if you're watching a recording of this, please feel free to drop any new questions in our Discord server. Mindverse is a team of more than 50 colleagues based in Singapore and around China. We're delighted to have the founders of the company be joining us today. First, we have Kissin Lin, our co-founder and COO. Kissin is a tech veteran, having worked in the industry for 12 years. She managed new product strategies at Meta headquarters and later on built the monetization strategy team at TikTok. Kissin is deeply interested in how AI can power innovation, and particularly how AI can be used by businesses of any size, from startup to mid-sized firm to enterprise. Having worked on strategies for business clients at Meta and TikTok, she steers many of Mindverse's partnerships, deployments, and industry relationships. Next, we have Mindverse co-founder and CEO, Dr. Fang Bo Tao. Feng Bo graduated at the top of his undergraduate class and 12 years ago began his PhD in computer science at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, working under early data mining pioneer, Dr. Zhao Wei Han. After his PhD, he worked as a senior research scientist at Facebook and oversaw key feature upgrades to the app's content recommendation algorithm and user news feeds. He then served as the founding director of the Neurosymbolic Lab at Alibaba, leading the effort to build cognitive AI systems that were implemented across the organization. Fang Bo began working on the project that became Mindverse in 2020, seeking to develop an impactful and useful AI tool as a force for innovation, efficiency, and social good. Now I'm going to pass the baton over to Dr. Tao, and, and thank you so much for joining us all. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Fan Bo Tao, the co-founder and CEO of Mindverse. Uh, Mindverse is an AGI company based in Singapore. So we have been solving the AGI challenge for more than four years, long before the recent craze of AI. Uh, in a way, this AI bus has been a blessing for us as it sets the stage for what we are all striving to achieve, that is crafting AI solutions that can truly benefit society with a focus on thoughtful design engaging user experience and the strong ethical foundations. So today we are super, super excited here to announce our closed beta launch. After two years of sales mode, we are finally ready to invite journalists, developers, technologists, and users into our ecosystem. Let's see what we can build together. So for many years, we are convinced that AI is going to redefine every application and service user interfaces, and computing. Imagine a workplace where creativity thrives free from repetitive tasks, where people can innovate and make decisions alongside AI's help. That's the future we want. That's the future we are building. At the heart of Mindverse, we have MindOS. It is an AI being platform based on our unique AGI framework called the Unified Mind Model. By blending large language models with insights from various academic fields like memories and perception and cognition, we are building AI beings that are incredibly autonomous and human-like. 
Um, you can think of it like a designing AI system inspired by our amazing human mind and then teaching AI as how you teach a person to be a professional, and which will result in a much smarter and more grounded AI experience. So although generative AI is super pop popular these days, my love for AI goes way back to my PhD days 12 years ago. So I've seen the incredible evolution of NLP systems, which leads to today's impressive large language models. I've also worked at Facebook and other tech giants and my team used many of these advancements in NLP to build better news feed and shopping experiences. But in 2020, before we started Mindverse, I realized two things. Um, first, and probably very obviously, um, building recommendation systems for a tech giant isn't going to make the world a much better place. Um, but the second thing was perhaps more perceptive. Uh, I realized that large language model was a very good foundation to simulate the human brain and therefore can help revolutionize how we interact with the internet and get digital services. And also to be super useful in almost every context. But when I began working on Mindverse and MindOS in 2020, I couldn't have imagined the AI craze we are seeing now. The popularity of AI made me also realize that large language model-based AI could either be a force for good and creativity, or it could be immersively destructive by amplifying misinformation and bias. But I did see the importance of being an early mover myself. And I recognized that I could use my AI research background to, to build a tool for good. So these are the major reasons why we build MindOS. We envision MindOS as a middle layer between large language models and businesses and individuals. So we try to democratize AI for everyone, helping to level the playing ground between giant corporations and smaller companies by giving everyone easy access to sophisticated AI beings and building AIs that are deeply integrated and grounded within any scenario. So at Mindverse, we are all about making life better with AI beings. For example, making it easy to find products and services by chatting with AI agents instead of endless searching, customizing UI and UX to match what a user really like for a more enjoyable experience, and helping companies improve by automating boring tasks and simplifying customer interactions. And moreover, we also want to build AI with empathy so they really understand users and their needs, and also boosting productivities with AI copilots so people can focus on being creative and working together. So now, please allow me to introduce my co-founder, Kisan, who will provide further insights on our product, MindOS, the AI being platform we are building. Let's go, Kisan. Thanks, Dr. Tao. Hello, everyone. I'm Kisan, co-founder and CEO of MindFirst. It's my pleasure to introduce MindOS, as well as our broader service framework, Mind as a Service or mass. You probably have used traditional chatbots as a, you know, a business or as a customer. And you may very likely have tried ChatGPT and other LLM-based tools. Well, compared to traditional chatbots, ChatGPT is just amazing, isn't it? But when it comes to business applications, both of them have pros and cons. Legacy chatbots require a complete Q&A set to be useful. They rely heavily on keyword matching and the answers can sometimes be rigid. And moreover, as a business owner, you probably need to update the Q&A from time to time in order for the chatbot to reflect the latest business or product information. And large language models, on the other hand, are much easier to deploy and more flexible to interact with. If you expect them, however, to provide unique and reliable answers that ensure brand personality and safety, you'll probably still need to done, do a lot of uh, engineering work to make it happen. Well, of course, there are quite a lot of tools that you can use to fine tune these models or perform specific tasks, but they all live in one silo and require you to initiate the workflow. 
coordinate or shift among different tools to get your job done. And that process itself can be time consuming. So what if all these tools are on one platform commanded by one ultra smart AI genius? A smart and easy to use AI genius that is both controllable and flexible. We hear you. Over the last year, we've been building exactly this tool. And now we proudly introduce to you MindOS. It's both controllable and flexible. It's both powerful and easy to deploy. And what's more, it's with customizable personality and long-term memories, allowing your AI genius to connect with your customers like a real person does. And what's even more, it can also teach, you, teach itself new skills. Dr. Tao will show you how these self-taught skills work in the last session of today's webinar. Train one genius and let that genius solve everything for you. That's what we aim to bring to you. So here we have an example of MindOS being deployed by an education tech company called Horizon Academic, where we populate the name and information of the firm. And then we connect APIs like Shopify or others and upload background information, manuals, or other files. You just upload unsorted documents like how you will upload to your colleagues rather than a complicated data set that takes hours to configure. So the folks at Horizon can then apply all these settings and can test through real-time interactions with the chat preview tool that you see on the right. Mind as a Service is our broader framework for AI as a service. You get the idea. And now let's talk about our product itself, Mind OS. First, I'll show you how setup works from a company perspective. And then we'll look at an example of interacting with an AI genius. And finally, we'll do a live demo. So you might ask, how long will it take to train such ultimate AI genius? The answer is just a few steps. Step one, choose appearance. Here you see there are several avatar styles, including Ready Player Me or other styles that you can choose or upload pictures. And if you have your own avatar, you can upload your own avatar as well. And then choose voice. There are plenty of voice that you can choose and you can also select the style, the pitch, the speed. Step three, just write down biography, like how you will describe a friend using natural language. And then step four, you can do more customizations. For instance, set up greetings or give instructions, like how you will define a person's life goal. And after you give out all these principles and instructions, the next step, you can upload documents or just simply paste web links so that the genius can learn something. So here, after you add some web links here, you can already chat with the genius to ask him something about your company or your product information. And then you can just turn on API integration that we already built in here. And the last step, is to paste the code to your website or to your app, and it's done. Very simple, isn't it? So next, let's see how it can be both controllable and flexible. Well, the control you get from a traditional chatbot comes from your entry of written FAQs. And writing and maintaining FAQs can be so painful because things change so fast nowadays. And with MindOS, this process can be done painlessly because of the knowledge function that you see here. You just throw in all your product details. And if you don't want to maintain this, an even easier way is just then to copy and paste your company web pages here and let the genius crawl the content for you. Want the genius to respond with cheerful language style? No problem. Just upload your sales narrative. And want the genius to not only answer inquiries, but also remind customers of relevant discounts when they are making a choice so you can make more conversions. No problem. Just write down these instructions in uh, this, the instruction field, as simple as that. 
and you want the genius to search on the web when necessary? For instance, weather forecast, news report, stock price check, those should all be in real time. And you can do that simply by dropping down the web links to define the web search scope. MindOS is powerful not only because it learns your company knowledge so quickly, but also because you can add various skills. Skills are things that your AI genius can do for you using in-house or third-party tools, like connecting to a calendar app, CRM, or social media. At Horizon, we told the genius that it should be able to book sales meetings with prospective students when asked. And then we created the, the appointment template for it to work with. You can create more specialized skills in similar ways. You just need to upload the open API description file and then adjust the automatically parsed skill card as needed. And that's it. Deploying AI Genius onto your app or website is also simple. All you need to do is to copy the custom code here and paste it into your website. And as you can see, Horizon was using an, a website building tool and it didn't even need to have a web developer to do all of this. Just simply copy and paste. It's a very easy deployment. And one of the most obvious cues when you are talking to a bot is when the bot has no personality. Some users will just refuse to interact with it because it's boring, even though it solves their needs. We could definitely do better. And here we have an example from a Web3 company called Hooked that wanted a more playful AI genius to better match their business. So the Hooked Academy has four tutors, as you can see here, each with a different personality. Kama here speaks for Dogecoin and is more cheerful. As you can see, she was using a lot of like emoji. While Ophelia, this, this one you see, who represents ETH, is more calm and nerdy. And while they can answer all questions, oh, they can all answer your blockchain related questions, like checking the latest ETH prices or summarizing the best upcoming NFT mints. Their different personalities make it more interesting to interact with. And finally, contextual and long-term memories that allow AI genius to connect with customers like a real friend. Here we have an example of an AI genius asking the user to give some profile information. And you can see the genius tailor its responses based on the past, ex the past interactions. Users can see what the genius knows about them, allowing the user to control over what memories get to be built, what memories are true, and offering transparency so that users feel more comfortable interacting with your genius. With so many awesome features, AI Genius can be useful to so many industries. Can be a hotel butler or conference organizer. Can be your customer service representative or your digital salesperson. Can be a tutor after school or any industry that customers need inter instant and reliable information. One of the most popular applications is in retail and e-commerce. Sometimes you just don't know what to search for when you are actually looking for something. For instance, I'm going to Hawaii for a wedding next weekend. So what should I buy? What should I prepare? And instead of breaking down the checklist yourself and search for products one item after another, with AI Genius, customers simply need to ask this question and AI Genius can provide a comprehensive shopping list with, sh with product recommendations. And for brands with offline and online presence, same AI genius can even serve customers across omnichannel and record customer preferences in your CRM, bringing consistent brand experiences to your customers. Travel and hospitality industry could also benefit a lot from AI genius. We all know that planning and booking for a trip makes so many steps and, and, and it's across different platforms. And with our extensive API integrations, one AI genius 
can make all the planning and booking for your customers. And moreover, for hotels which connect MindOS to their room management system, the AI Genius can also be personalized hotel butlers for everyone, offering in-time room services. Another example is MICE. Conference organizers usually get to be asked a lot of administrative questions, which can be highly rep repetitive sometimes. And that can be simplified through AI. With real-time responses, multi-language support, it's even more amazing for conferences with global audiences. Enough words spoken. I guess all of you cannot wait for a real live demo. So now I'm taking you to this Tony's store. Um, it's a Shopify landing page and you can see that there are, it's a furniture store, obviously. There are many chairs and an AI genius pops out. Now I want to buy some chairs for my study, but I have neck pain. Um, and usually it's very hard to find um, things that fits me. So let's see if she gets it. I'm feeling that pain. Okay, she knows that ergonomic chair can solve my neck pain. That's, uh, that's amazing. So there are three suggestions that she gave. Now uh, compare the first two chairs. I want to see more comparisons. The first two looks great. Great. Okay, cool. So I actually like this chair quite a lot. Now, if I click into this chair, wow. And she senses that I'm looking at this chair and she immediately sent me more selling points about this chair, trying to pitch me to make this conversion. Um, I like this chair but I want to buy a desk that fits this one. Any desk that fits this one. Looks good, but not so fancy. Any fancier choices? Fancier choices. Okay. I like this one quite a lot. But anyways, uh, the point today is not to make a conversion, but today is to show how the AI Genius works. So I guess you all wonder how this AI Genius get to be created. Now let's... Um, try to create a new genius from the scratch um, to recreate this one. So let's call this AI genius Tony because it's for Tony's store. And you can see you can either create from the scratch or select from a template. Here I select from the template so it's easier for me. Now, store name, Tony's selection and store introduction, uh, furniture store, that's simple. And now I just need to connect to APIs um, by entering the Shopify domain and then entering the access key. So you see the Shopify API is immediately connected. Now I want to, in I want to just drop the refund policy here as the document upload. So very simple. It already gets the refund policy here as a document. I just click apply and it takes me to further customization. Now let's say I want to see how this genius looks like on my website, but I don't want to deploy to my website yet. I can just do a preview here and just by copy and paste the web page here, you can already see a preview of AI Genius in action. Now I want to further customize the store uh, Genius because Tony must be a male, first of all. Now, um, after you know, all these customization, I can also make the voice, but it's probably too much now. Um, yeah, so 
let's say, disable the voice because it's it can be uh it can be quite you know noisy. So let's see if he can already work. Any suggestions for my uh for my bedroom decor? Cool. He found some chairs or wardrobe for the bedroom within the store. Now, you get the idea. It's very simple customization, just a few steps. And this, you know, AI genius can already talk to you like a customer service representative. And if you are from other industries, you might wonder how this AI genius works for other industries. So here's another example of how this works for hotel and hospitality industry. Um, TripAdvisor the very simple customization that we made here at Skills Space, we basically enabled a TripAdvisor API for this AI genius to get place details and search for places, and that's it. And in Persona, we also made a few customizations uh, in terms of inst instructions, et cetera, to make sure that its recommendations is always concise. So now let's see how it works. I want to go to San Francisco and have fun. Cool. She suggested to me a few places. Um, but I actually actually want to go shopping. But of course, we'll blame my friend who wants to go, to go shopping. My friend wants to go shopping. Westfield, I like it. In Japan, Center Malls or Crocker, Garrett Loria. I haven't been to the second one, so maybe it's a good choice. Um, any hotels near the second option? Hyatt. Palace Hotel or Hotel Triton. Uh, I can, as you can see here, I can I can click any card that sh she sent me, and that will take me to the hotel page for me to make bookings. And so uh, it's very simple. But let's say I actually want some budget hotel because I would probably spend all my all my money shopping. Uh, any budget hotel choices? Instead. So she's searching for budget hotels near Crocker Galleria. There are a few budget hotels. They definitely look way much cheaper. So yeah, you can see that a hotel butler or trip advisor could also work very well as long as we connect them to uh, some search for places API and uh, better yet, if we if you connect it with weather forecast API, et cetera, so she can perform more tasks. And uh, it's already quite useful to plan for trips or search for places. Now, you might say that um, I don't want the genius to you know talk to the clients already, um, but I want the genius to be helpful for my organization to increase the organization productivity. So those genius can be very helpful in terms of onboarding new uh, people, onboarding new employees, especially salespeople. So here we have a character called Sales Copilot. And this Sales Copilot can teach newly onboarded salesperson any knowledge about uh, the company's products, et cetera. So um, yeah, it's it's very magical. Uh, several instructions and principles, as you see, as you see here, and we just upload some product knowledge, or you can also do some, you know, allow web search or do some web page link here, and you can already talk to this uh, copilot. So let's assume that I am a newly onboarded salesperson to this organization, and I ask him, tell me something about our core products. Great, he's not only 
telling me the core products, but also including the links here. And you see, it's it could be very helpful for new salesperson who's just onboarded to learn about products. Now, uh, I'm going to Seattle for a business trip next week. Uh, any leads from Seattle? Let's see if he can pull out the leads from the CRM system because here in the skills, we actually enabled the CRM contacts. Awesome. He's pulling out the leads from Seattle so that I can, I can visit them. So it's very useful to use natural language as queries. Now, I want him to do you know, even more than that. Uh, can you rank them by seniority? Because I want to see who is my most important potential client. Cool. Now this Emily Kim looks good. He, she works at Amazon. So let's say, uh, can you suggest any product that uh, fit Emily Kim? As a new salesperson, I probably don't know which product works best for which client. And so he can help me even do the suggestions. Okay, he says might be interested in purchasing electronic devices such as laptop or a tablet. That's great, very helpful. Um, and I want to, I actually want to book a meeting with Emily Kim by suggesting the products. So I want him to write that email for me. An email to Emily Kim pitching those products and scheduling a meeting. Great, he's generating this email. Awesome, let's, that's basically how these different characters work. And you can see here, um, you can also create new genius from the scratch for other industries as well. And uh, it can be both for internal use or external use. So I hope that's uh, interesting for you. And let's pass on back to Dr. Tao to introduce to you the product roadmaps and very exciting next steps. Yeah, that's amazing, Kisan. Now that we have showed you that some of the core features of MindOS, let's talk about next steps and how we can work together. So first, we will be in touch very soon with everyone who joined us today uh, with a recording and further information on your free beta license. You should hear us, you should hear from us by like early next week. So if not, please check your spam folder just in case. And everyone will be getting a license that includes 2,000 credits as a part of the closed beta launch. If you are a journalist or thought leader in AI, feel free to play with MindOS and share your insights in an upcoming story or get in touch for an interview or walkthrough. If you are a business looking at generative AI tools for marketing, service, sales, or development, feel free to use your license as a sandbox to play around in. We welcome you to be to tailor an AI genius to your industry and your firm because every industry is very different. So we are super excited to hear from you how you might apply MindOS in your niche. We welcome you to reach out by email or Discord with future requests or feedback on things you love and ways we can improve for you. If you are agency and IT, consultancy or enterprise SaaS tool, get in touch with us to explore possible partnerships. Our company's next step will be our open beta launch, where we will be adding new features, integrations, and optimizations. Some of that is already underway and some of it will be based on your feedback. We'll be announcing our open beta timeframe in the coming weeks on Discord and Twitter, so stay tuned. And later this year, we will be taking feedback and lessons from our open beta 
to our global product launch, where we will have an even wider array of integrations, a bigger library of avatars, more languages, and uh, most importantly, we all know, much more smarter AI beings. And here's the question, the next question I want to share with you. Where is MindOS bringing us to? So me, myself, being a researcher in the AGI space for many years, I would like to share my thoughts on the future of AI, which I call it autonomous AGI. So autonomous AGI is a very powerful technology that has the potential to revolutionize the way how we interact with AI, especially AI systems like ChatGPT. To achieve its full potential, autonomous AGI needs self-learning abilities to self-improve and self-upgrade by pulling data from various sources, such as company networks and the whole internet. It can also adapt its behavior by incorporating users' feedback. Additionally, it requires deep thinking abilities to tackle complex tasks on its own and unleash its brain power by building iterative workflows. So I believe this is the next frontier of AI, and this is an exciting and a challenging future of AI. Therefore, we are taking a very long-term approach here by building Mind OS on the backbone of an open developer community. This will allow the AI developer community to participate and co-create autonomous AI alongside with us. By doing so, we can ensure that the technology continues to evolve and improve with the help of a diverse group of contributors. And yeah, actually the autonomous AI, autonomous AGI is happening now and it's happening way sooner than anyone else could ever possibly anticipate it. Let's take a look at the exciting demo of autonomous AGI we have built. It's an AI genius called Work Copilot. Here is how it works. First, we set up an AI with no prior configurations, like creating a new baby. I then directly asked it to find interesting clients for me. You know what the AI say? She recognized that she lacks the necessary data and takes the initiative to search the company's network. And then she discovers a CRM API and asks if she can learn to use this CRM tool. With my permission, the AI connects to the API and learned how to use it. And with the help of this CRM tool, Workpilot compiles a list of relevant clients and ranks by importance. And even more, it constructs a workflow to deliver client leads to me every 10 minutes. Imagine in the future where everyone will be able to have an AI like this. People can only just need to issue commands and the AI will cleverly harness all available information and tools to complete the task. If the tool is not there, they can even build one for themselves. And you know what's the best part of it? The AI is going to grow and adapt with the user, creating a powerful and a dynamic partnership that no other technologies have ever done. So it's truly, truly amazing. Okay, back to reality. Before we turn to Q&A, I have one last thing to share with you, which is how to stay in touch. So today we are super excited and grateful to have you guys here and share the good news of our product to you guys. We encourage you to join our Discord server to have a direct line to our team and to have a channel to interact with fellow MindOS users. Here is our server link. And we also post regularly on Twitter and LinkedIn and our YouTube channel will post regular updates with new features, tutorials, and clever use cases of mind OS across different industries. Industries, And finally, we think mind OS will be one of the indispensable AI tools of tomorrow. And today we thank you so much for joining us in our first step. We hope to stay in touch. Thanks guys. Thank you so much, Dr. Tao and Kissin. Now we are gonna move over to the Q and A portion of the launch. Uh, thank you so much for all of your wonderful questions and for staying tuned thus far. 
Uh, so let's start with Jake. Um, these images show Fortnite or gamer style avatars for characters. Is it possible to change this? I can take this question. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so we are we are working with a lot of uh, avatar providers as well as the AI deepfake providers to allow you know uh, AI generated pictures be able to act and move uh, so it's more real. And if you have your own avatar, it's uh, very welcome to that you upload your own avatar. So it's a uh, very flexible in terms of appearance. Fantastic. And this next question is from Nick. Can we load our own slash custom LLM into MindOS? Uh, I'll take this one. Uh, uh, currently, it is uh, not supported, unfortunately, because uh, our our belief of how mind how the AI genius should be constructed uh, is most uh, sophist sophisticated scenarios would be able to tuned and trained by teaching the AI using natural language. So the AI foundation, the large language model foundation is gonna be the same, but the way how we teach it, the way how to teach it to use knowledge and tools would be different by setting different natural languages. So that's the current stage. And uh, it's possible in the future that if we can have a more domain specific large language models trained by you or other um, partners, uh, we can, take a look to see how that fits into the mind framework we are building and see if that's gonna give you like better experience. Fantastic, thank you for that. And this next question is, if I'm an admin, can I access the chat logs afterwards so that I can follow up? Uh, yeah, I can take this question. Uh, yes, you can access the chat logs in the analytics field. Uh, you can also download, export the chat logs, uh, but to protect the user privacy, the chat logs will always be anonymous. So you wouldn't be able to see like specific user ID in the chat logs. And on top of that, you can also, you know, in the analytics field, you can also see uh, all these in-depth insights. For instance, you can ask the genius uh, who, you know, what's my what's my social media comments recently? What's the sentiment of, uh, of, of people talking to my AIs recently? What are the biggest feedback people have on my products? And he will be able to generate from you by analyzing the chat logs. Fantastic. And this next question from Ben, does the system support speech to text slash text to speech? Yes, absolutely. So um, we played some voice just now, uh, but just because it's uh, it's too cheerful, so we, so we kind of <laughs> muted the, the website. Um, so there are many voices that you can choose and in different styles. And uh, when you deploy, once you deploy to your landing page or to your to your app, you can also enable speech to text by allowing the uh, users to uh, speak directly to the AI genius. Fantastic. And this next question, can you elaborate if we use MindOS in education slash training mm -hmm. industry to teach students on subjects of interest, can I have multiple avatars each focusing on specific subjects? Yeah, absolutely. That's a you know that's a very good question. Um, so in the in the hooked video, you can see that there are four tutors already, and the four tutors each represent one uh, different personality, and also. You know, uh, for now they have the same knowledge because uh, people just wanted to interact uh, with different personalities. But for you to uh, deploy this AI, these AI geniuses in your education field, you probably will upload different knowledge to different avatars. So, for instance, one with a high school math teacher, one is a, a English teacher, one is a science teacher, whatever. And so by uploading different knowledge to different tutors, they will be able to represent and teach students with, uh, guide students with different uh, domain field. So that is easy. And you can also tailor the, the different appearances and voice so that each teacher looks quite real to the students. Um, so for education and training industry, actually the uh, the applications are quite wide. Uh, quite wide. You can uh, allow the AI geniuses to be off-school tutors to to help students with Q and A with uh, easy questions, and you can also allow these tutors to become, you know, uh, stuff for your for your schools for student administration administration. Because, for instance, when students or their parents 
ask about the school details so they can when they consider uh, the school administration, you can have this genius answering all these school details to them. So it can be used for as tutors or as uh, administrators. Um, and we also have uh, very, very interesting use cases in education field for like art school teachers, because uh, with generative AI, you can allow the students to see how these artworks look like uh, once they once they say something. So that will highly strongly interest the students, uh, you know, make the, the, the make the people students become more interested in artworks at early stage. So yeah, there are many applications and we welcome you to, you know, come talk to us and we can brainstorm or, or uh, deploy this product together. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Yes. Your products are so cool. I'm wondering, is it uh, a, a TOB or TOC tool or both? And what about the price of your Genius Mind OS? Maybe Dr. Tao? Yes. can discuss uh, roadmap <laughs> yes sure yeah uh, uh very happy to answer this one so currently as you can see uh for this closed beta we are mostly launching to business users uh, for their business scenarios um but uh, uh around the, the time of the open beta within one or two months uh, we are going to make it public for both business and just individual users and uh that would be exciting that because it's not only useful for business to deliver their service right because it's also very useful as as all these questions suggesting uh, all these individuals can use this mind os tool to build their own geniuses to help them in very different aspects of life and uh, that's our goal as well and uh, in terms of the pricing uh, we are still uh, figuring it out but for now because it's close beta and it's for free for everyone uh, and uh, anyone who joined this webinar would be able to get a free account with um, reasonably a good credit that you can use to to play around and uh, yeah that's it yeah Fantastic. and we expect we expect the pricing to be available uh for the open beta stage which will be within one month absolutely Fantastic. All right. Next question. Uh, what kinds of partnership opportunities, uh, collaborations does Mindverse have in mind with companies in different industries? Are you looking to work with agencies or IT consultancies as partners? Is that what a deployment partner refers to? Uh, very good question. So we welcome any, you know, many different sort of partners, uh, IT consultants or or you know, brand agencies or other avatar companies like partners uh, who can work with us to deploy a solution together to the, the clients that you serve. Or um, with de deployment partners, we actually um, we actually made the, the partners who can who have technical abilities to deploy our solutions for the clients, for instance, building the uh, connecting the API for the clients or building the front end uh, appearances like apps for the clients. So, so there are many different sort of partners that we are looking to uh, connect with. And if you are interested in that, please do email us. Amazing. All right, and next question. Hello, can uh, it be a research assistant, you know, helping with simplifying algorithms or writing codes for complicated ML models? If yes, how reliable could it be because ChatGPT can't be trusted for complicated models? Yeah, I can take this one. Apparently, <laughs> uh, this is a quite pro user, at least for ChatGPT. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, very excellent question. So I, I would answer that in two folds. One is uh, our underlying foundation model is actually using the most advanced uh, GPT model. So uh, there are some like, uh, uh, like limitations of the model, which means um, there are definitely things that this model cannot do. Therefore, the genius built around it cannot do, right? But uh, for other things, for example, like you say that you want to have this AI to to know the the subtleness of the of the, AI, the the thing you are researching on and trying to give like more complicated solution, that can be helped by the genius you built around the foundation models because we have this version that this AI model would be able to iteratively teach it how to solve a complicated problem. So by using the foundation model properly and cleverly, we would solve, we would somehow uh, 
get rid of the limitation of the foundation model and trying to solve it using different resources and a multiple cause. So that's possible you can solve it. Um, but uh, as for your use case, like this machine learning training research, these are very pro use cases. And uh, I guess we'll find out if you can build a genius on MinorLess can solve your issue. Yes, that's part of the beauty of the open, uh, the, the open beta, right? Testing. Uh, so this next question is actually two questions. One, is it possible to work around and get a service in Thai? And then two, the second question, and I it seems a little bit similar to the previous question. Could I train AI for cognitive behavioral therapy? If yes, what's the format should I use to prepare? Uh, like decision trees. So yeah, I suppose what's sort of your advice for gearing um, you know, geniuses for specific use cases or industry? Uh, I, I can try to answer this one. Um, I think that's a very good question because I, I can see a lot of use cases where people not only do shallow reasoning, but also they need to follow like much more complicated workflows. Uh, for example, the therapy scenario. Uh, we are building a new tool. We call it AI chain, which means uh, you are not just upload, uploading an API for your use case. You are basically building a pre-made flow and uh, you, the AI would be able to use, to, to, to absorb that flow and incorporates that into their thinking process. And in that way, after you build this flow, saying like this a decision tree of therapy or something like that, the AI would dynamically determine when to use this flow for a particular use case and dynamically decide how to make the, the delivery of this service uh, much more like human touch and uh, with the understanding of the user facing the AI. So I think that's po that's possible. And the this AI chain tooling thing would be much more mature in the open beta version, but you can start to try it in this closed beta version to see how that works. Fantastic. This next question, can I upload my API document and let AI geniuses use my API? Uh, I can take this one. De yeah, definitely. That's a, <laughs> that's a key point of our genius building platform that you can yes. upload any documents, no matter that rep representing a knowledge or representing an API, um, whatever. Uh, that's, a, that's the power of MindOS. You can just customize it by all these different APIs by, by simply uploading documents into it. And the AI would be able to learn how to call the API, what's the best way to use this API within the workflow and all these kind of things. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a question even I could have answered. Um, <laughs> so uh, next, um, is MindOS Genius Function a, com a competitive relationship with Microsoft's virtual agent using GPT-4? We are, um, <laughs> we're actually, <laughs> we are actually one of the key partners of Microsoft as, uh, as well as like uh, OpenAI uh, in terms of uh, using their API services. So, um, so yeah, we are, we're more of partners than, uh, than, than, you know, a competitive relationship. And we totally, we totally love uh, even deeper strategic partnerships. Like uh, for instance, we helping, we helping them uh, customize the LLM for you know smaller companies or or, or different industries, niche industries. Uh, we think that that would totally be valuable for 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 all of us. Amazing. And next, if I upload my set page and data, do I need to worry about hallucinations or potential inaccuracies? Or what are some features I could use to test those? Uh, yeah, I can take this one. Uh, this is an excellent question. As we said, the, the large language models have this hallucination issue and were very hard to control. So actually the team of our team put a lot, so, so much effort trying to solve this one um, for these business scenarios. And we have done a lot to, to, do, to solve it from the framework level where anything you type in or upload uh, which will have a less, much less possibility to be have like hallucinated answers. But uh, for you guys, when you're trying to create this genius, you can also give the genius more like customized instructions 
So because sometimes having a little bit, you know, extension on the meanings of the documents would be good, um, but uh, sometimes not. So you have the full control of how this AI should express ideas, express the knowledge. So you can simply type in the instructions you think it's proper to train the AI. And after you train the AI, you type anything, the AI would immediately be up updated and you can test it with this like uh, form, like, like this chat chatbot uh, uh, section on the right side of the system. And you can see if that's getting better. So building an AI on my basically like an iterative process. So you train it a little bit and test it out. If not, train it a little bit more, adding more power, adding more like abilities and test it. And until you think this agent is good enough um, for you. Fantastic, great. Yes, being able to see the genius in real time on the side as you customize is such a great feature. Um, yeah, and next question. I think the quality of the response from the genius really matters. How is the reasoning ability of the genius? Could you explain theoretically or show by demo? Also, how do you solve the limited context window problem of LLMs? Uh, yeah, that's a very pro question, I would say. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let, let me answer it quickly. Uh, one is uh, the reasoning is given by two layers. One layer is uh, the underneath large language models we are using, right? So we are using the best large language models, which is developed by OpenAI. So the model itself has a lot of reasoning ability um, built in their model. And uh, the second part of reasoning is provided by us. So by building this mind framework on top of the model, the AI would first think the best way to plan things out. And if there are things that cannot be planned, they would go into a very iterative process trying to solve it step by step into some deep thinking mode. So that's what enhances the reasoning ability of the single large language model call by a lot. So that's what the reasoning that we are doing. But uh, to be honest, I think it's just a starting of this new space. So there are definitely very tough tasks that AI would not be able to reason. And uh, the second one is, like you say, that the limitation of the context window of large language models. That's the whole point of why we are building this knowledge section. Because you, you can see in this knowledge section, you can upload as many documents as you want, which is definitely going to exceed the context window of a single large language model call, and which is not solved very well by ChatGPT and other tools. Uh, so we built this like knowledge engine that we let the mind talk to the knowledge engine with a smart, smart retrieval model. So they would be able to know where when to use these knowledge and how can we find the knowledge, just like how humans use their memories. In that way, the, the memory of the AI would be unlimited. And uh, the only thing is we can fetch all these relevant information from the memory into the reasoning engine. So they would uh, be able to handle the, the most accurate, most useful information, not just putting all the information into the brain. That would be very overwhelming for large language models. So that's that's how we do it. Great. And this is a question on the training functions of geniuses. How do we train the spot on our custom website and uh, the additional data that we might have? Uh, yeah, I can take this one. So it, it's simple. Like, like, like you can see that you just using the MinOS platform to iteratively teach and train the AI until you think the performance of AI reaches your standard. And in the meanwhile, you can upload these web pages, APIs, or other documents to the AI. So the AI would be able to learn how to absorb this information and learn how to use these API tools. And if it's still not satisfactory, you can type in instructions, principles, all these kind of things to, to fine tune the behavior of the AI. Wonderful. And may I ask that the bots are based on the new subject prompt inter engineering, prompt engineering? Uh, yeah, uh, in a way, yes. So uh, it's not as simple as like uh, engineer a single prompt so we can call the large language models. Actually, the way how we think about prompt engineering is 
building a mind framework on top of the foundation models. So it's autonomous. It's uh, it's able to generate its own prompt, generating its own way of thinking to use the power of foundation models underneath. So I would say uh, it's a much more advanced version of prompt engineering. And because it's not building a prompt, it's building a framework that knows how to leverage information and how to compile information and ability to unleash the power of large language models. Fantastic. And this next question is from Charlie Fink. Uh, do you think people need to be trained to use models? If so, what is the most efficient way to do this? Uh, sorry, can I say it again? Yes. Uh, do you think people need to be trained to use these models? If so, what's the most efficient way or your recommendation of how, um, you know, you could train people to use you know, geniuses or, you know, that mm. function? That makes sense. I see. You mean, you mean train people how to use the platform, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, the platform is with, with, with a very... A simple goal to make it as simple as easy to use as possible <laughs> so if if it's having difficulties for people to use it so that's our problem <laughs> that's that, that we, we don't make our job good enough but it's true that nowadays because this concept is very new that you can train a new mind a new ai genius so it takes time to to learn how to use it but yeah we have these documentations and uh, uh, all these kind of things available and uh, in the future, you can you guys can always go to the Discord channel. So to to give like uh, deep questions, and we can give you more detailed answers for how to use it. Yes, we have a product documentation that provides an overview of MindOS and taps into the deeper functionality of the platform. And again, as Dr. Tao was saying, uh, feel free to always message us on Discord if there's anything you need. And that's also where we post relevant updates. So yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, moving on, how do you ensure control of responses in terms of trust and safety? Yes, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in terms of trust and safety, we have a, a, a lot of control, including we're using the uh, trust, uh, we're using some APIs to control the responses, and we also provide we also are deploying some human feedback to ensure the trust and safety. Um, I would say like, to be honest in this field for, for you know, AGI, the trust and safety issue is not perfectly done for, for everyone. So um, so we need to keep improving on that. And uh, for, you know, for now for brand safety or any trust issue, we can see that the, uh, the accuracy and everything is quite okay, but not to say perfect. So, so we'll keep improving. Fantastic. And does this genius have long-term memory, i.e. still remember what she learned or how to use the CRM tools one week later, two weeks later, et cetera? Yes, they do have long-term memories. And uh, and so <laughs> uh, it depends on you to, to select how long the memory will, gets to be stored. Of course, it's a, it's a balance between performance and cost. And so uh, if you're interested, please, uh, you know, come to us at Discord and we can we can share with you the, the more detailed feature and also the more detailed uh, storage uh, later on. Fantastic. And are there input limits and output limits in terms of tokens used? Uh, yeah, definitely. So um, I don't know, a couple of thousands of tokens? Yeah. But uh, the way how we solve this is if you have a lot of things to input, just try to make them as knowledge not as like queries in the in the type section. So the, if you, you can type, you can add like as many knowledges as you want. So the AI would be able to figure out what are the parts that's needed to answer a very professional question. Absolutely. And can MindOS be used in biopharma industry, which typically requires industry background and professional knowledge? Um, it depends on what kind of usage it is. If for like internal internal analysis or internal uh, 
customer service or whatever, um, that will be useful because you can just enter, simply enter those knowledge. And for every industry, theoretically, as long as you have the knowledge it's um, that you can upload, it's, it's the same. Uh, if you want to use for like ex external usage, I'm not sure what the use case would be. We can discuss about it on the Discord channel or through email. Great. And this next question is, I have some sensitive data and don't want it to be uploaded to an external server. Uh, can I still use MindOS? Uh, yeah. Uh, I we, can. Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Sorry, uh, just my, 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 my take on this question is quite simple. So uh, it's a very common concern for a lot of people. And uh, if you think it's too sensitive, my suggestion is to make it as an API endpoint where we don't upload the real data onto an external server, but we only use the data as it's needed in a user's conversation. So the API would call and try to get some piece of information out of the, the internal server just for, for a better like conversation result. But the whole data, the entire, like entirety of data is still stored in your private server. Great. And this next question, uh, what are some differences between uh, MindOS from the ChatGPT plugin? Uh, let, let me try to answer this one. I take that a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, the, the basic difference between a plugin and a chat, uh, MindOS Genius is MindOS Genius is a real AI designed for your particular use case. Uh, but ChatGPT is a uh, plugin is a way to provide data to the ChatGPT application. So which means you cannot control the behavior patterns of the AI. You cannot having like uh, personalities of the AI and uh, you cannot deploy the ChatGPT with your uh, current website or applications. But we are trying to make it all available for businesses and individuals. You not only control the data feeding to the AI, you are actually controlling how AI thinks, how AI plans, how AI build stuff, all these kind of things. So you are building AI, not building data or building API. So I guess that's the way to put it. Yeah, absolutely. That's and we have one final question. Are there any capabilities for generating things like documentation or images, for example, PDFs or reports? Uh, yeah, I can take this one. Uh, that's an excellent question. And uh, we are building it. So you see that from our current platform that you upload stuff for AI to digest and uh, serve, right? But in the future, I think AI should be able to build their own API, build their own documents by themselves. That's a concept of autonomous AGI it's all about. So we are adding all these kind of cool features that AI not only know how to use these tools, but also know how to build these tools, how to generate these documents, generate these knowledge for it to further like provide service to users. And that's exciting. It really is so exciting. Um, well, I believe that wraps up the Q&A portion and thus the end of this launch webinar. Uh, we really appreciate all of you for joining us again. And thank you, Dr. Tao and Kissin for your brilliant insight. Uh, again, if you have any questions or need to reach out to us at any time, join the Discord server and we'll be ready to get in touch with you as soon as we can. Thank you so much again. And we look forward to hearing your feedback. Thank, thank you everyone you. for attending. Thank you. Bye.